Module 19 review. It says for problems one through six, write a statement in the set notation. Use the description of the sets to the right to com to complete each statement. I think first let's start off by let's make us a Venn diagram. Just a little bit more room. There we go. All right. And we're going to say this here is set A, and this here is set B. And then the whole thing there is the universal. So what do we got in set A? We got 21, uh, 23, 25, 27 and 29. <clears throat> now 21, I've already got it's right there. 24, uh, 27 is right there, and then 30 is right here. Let's see, 21 I don't have anywhere, so we'll just put it right here. 20, 21 is already taken care of. 22. 23 is already taken care of, 24 is taken care of, 25 is taken care of, I don't see 26, 27 is taken care of, I don't see 28, 29, 29 is right there, and 30 is right there. All right, so that's all our numbers. Now it says the intersections of set A and B. Well, this area here, uh, ooh, I don't want to feel. I did not want it. Uh, there we go. I don't want it filled up. So what do we do it like this? See this area here where the where the two overlap? That's the intersection. So we're gonna say A intersection B is I'm not gonna be able to erase that am I? That's all right. A intersection. And we're using set notation and that's 21 and 27. <clears throat> the complement of set A. That's everything that's not in set A. So uh, A complement. It's going to be, well, let's see, 20 is not in there. 21 is, but 22 is not. 23 is, but 24 is not. Uh, 25 is, 26 is not. 27 is, but 28 is not. And 29 is, and 30 is not. So that is... That is the complement of the set A. The complement is everything that is not in A, but is in the universal. Well, it seems like I'm having some technical difficulties today. Wow. Thirty was not. All right. 
Number three, the unions of set A and B. Well, that's everything that's in A and B. So let's do it like this. A union B. And we'll start off. We got 21, 23, 24, 25, uh, 27, 29, and 30. The complement of set B. Well, that's going to be everything that's not in B. So the complement of B. <clears throat> 20, uh, 21's in B, 22, 23, 24's in there, 25, 26, 28, and 29. That's the complement of B. That's everything that's not inside of this oval here. All right. The number of elements in set A. Let's count one, two, three, four, five. And then six. Hmm. Six. The number of elements in set B. One, two, three, four. Define C so that C is a subset of A. Okay, C. <clears throat> well, it can be one or all of these numbers. Okay, any of these numbers here. And I'll just use uh, 21 and 25. Okay. Hey, define D so that D is a subset of B. Um, well, we'll just go with, uh, we'll say 24 and 20, eh, 24 and 27. All right. We just, I just picked two numbers out of there. 82, it didn't matter. Okay, for problems 9 and 10, use the description of the sets in the box above. Create a Venn diagram to represent the sets A, B, and U. Okay, well, we did that just a minute ago, but we won't take this for a second. A, B, we had 23, 25, 29 here. 21 and 27 there, and 24 and 30. We had 20, 22, 28, and 20, ooh, 26, 26, and 28. Because it started at 21 and then went to 30. All right. Describe the parts of the Venn diagram that correspond to one through four above. Uh, one, uh, what was the intersection? And that's the overlap. The overlap of A and B. And then uh, the complement of A would be everything outside of the circle of A. So we'll say outside circle A. And then let's see, three. Let's go back. Three, the union of sets A and B. So that's going to be everything inside 
inside circles A and B. And then four, four was the complement of set B. So uh, outside circle B. Number 11, it says, use set notation to write a fraction given the probability the number chosen from the universal set will be in set A, fill in the numbers. Well, uh, there was, let's see here, number of A, that was five, and the sample space, the number in the sample space was 11. Okay, what is the probability that a number in U is not in A? Well, if there was a total of 11 and there was 5 in A, that means there was 6 that was not in A. So that's 6 over 11. What is the probability that a number in U is in A union B? Okay, well, how many was in, let's see, A union B? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven. Seven over 11. What is the probability that a number in U is not in A or B? Okay, well, let's go back. One, two, three, four. So there was four that was not in A or B, and there was 11 numbers total. Okay, here we go. That is 19 1. 19 2. For problems 1 through 8, give the value of each expression. 5 factorial. 5 factorial. Let's go to our calculator. And we got 5 uh, menu. 5, 1, and that is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, so that is 120. One twenty. Six factorial, well that's 6 times 120, that would be 720. 6 factorial equals 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Number 3, 7 factorial. Who's 0, 4, and 49, 50. So that's 50, 40. Okay, and just 7 menu, 5, 1, 50, 40. What about 6 factorial divided by 5 factorial? Okay, well, 6 factorial is that. 5 factorial is uh, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, and if you divide it, let's see, the 1s cancel out, the 2s cancel out, the 3s, the 4s, the 5, and you're just left with 6. Pretty much the same thing here, seven. Pretty much the same thing there, eight. Okay. Suppose n stands for any number. Write a fraction to show n factorial divided by n minus one factorial. Find its value. Seven, let's see, we got n factorial divided by n minus 1 factorial. Okay, well, let's see here. Wouldn't that be the same as n times, and then we got n minus 1 factorial, and then here we got n minus 1 factorial. These cancel out, and you are left with 
n. What is the value of n factorial divided by n minus 2 factorial? Well, okay, so n factorial divided by n minus 2 factorial. Well, that's going to be n times, and then we got n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial all over n minus 2 factorial. These will cancel out, and you're left with n times n minus 1. Huh. Pretty neat. Number 9. Use the fundamental counting principle to solve problems 9 through 11. Alicia is designing a flag with three stops. She has five different colors of fabric to use in any order she likes. But she does not want two strips next to each other to be the same color. All right. So how many choices? For the first strip, she's got five, okay? And then for the second strip, she doesn't have five anymore because she's used one and she doesn't want the same next, so that's going to be four, okay? And then the last one is going to be four, okay? So five times four is 20 times four is, I get 80, all right? Number 10, a travel agent is offering a vacation package. Participants choose the type of tour a meal plan, and a hotel class from the chart to the right. How many different packages, vacation packages, are offered? Well, let's see. Two, there's three there. And two, and then one, two, three, four. So I got four times three times two. Well, three times two is six times four. I got 24. 24. Number 11, uh, there are eight marbles in a bag, all of different colors. In how, many, in how many orders can four marbles be chosen? Well, let's see here. She's got one, two, three, four. Eight marbles in a bag, all are different colors. And how many orders can, so we've got, Eight on our first choice, right? And then our, well, we pulled one, so now we only got seven. And we've pulled two, so we only got six, and then five. So uh, eight times seven, eight times seven times six times five, 1680. I got 1680. Gill's padlock can be operated by entering three digits in the right order. Digits can be repeated. How many different orders of digits are there? Okay, well, how many digits are there, period? Well, it would be zero through nine, which is 10. So well, the first one is 10. The second one is going to be 10 again because you can repeat them. And then 10, so... Uh, I'm counting 1,000, right? And then, well, how many of those combinations work? Just one. So you got one over a thousand. Oh, so I guess the first question is a thousand. And then what is the probability one can guess the right? One over one thousand. Number 12, a playlist includes eight songs, including Mr. Carbono's favorite and second favorite. How many different ways can the playlist be shuffled? Hmm. How many different ways can the play shift be shuffled? Well, let's see. Uh, that would be eight factorial, 
which is uh, a menu by one forty thousand three hundred and twenty. All right. What is the probability that Mr. Carboneau's favorite song will be first and my second favorite song will be second? Well, that would be eight times seven. Eight times seven, and that's 56. But I only want, it. I want my favorite, and so I'm going to have the probability would be 1 over 56. What is the probability that a family with four children can have all girls? Hmm. What is the probability that a family with, well, let's see here, you got boy, girl, and you got boy, 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 girl. You got girl, boy, and then girl, girl. Seeing a pattern here? Hmm, that's two first, two square. And you got boy, 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 girl, boy, girl, boy, boy, girl, girl. You got girl. Boy, boy, girl, boy, girl. Then you got girl, girl, boy. Then you got girl, girl, girl. And if you go to the next one, that's going to see <clears throat> that's two, that's four, that's eight. The next one's going to be, we're going to say one over 16. Okay. And you can expand the tree one more, let one more, and you'll see. And I believe that is all of 19, it is, 19.2. What about 19.3? Explain why you should use combinations rather than permutations for this problem. All right, Calvin has enough money to, to get three new shirts and a buy two, get one free sale. There are eight color choices, and he wants to get three different colors. How many possible combinations of the three colors are there? Well, I would say the answer to explain why you should use combinations rather than permutations is because the order does not matter. You're going to walk away with three shirts either way, right? It doesn't matter whether you choose the red one first, the blue one first, or the green one first. Tell what the variables N and R stand for in the combination N choose R. So what does N stand for? And that would be the number of objects. And what does R stand for? How many taken at a time? Now, it says substitute the values N and R into the formula and solve to find the number of combinations of 3, 2. So we have eight color choices. So we're going to 8, choose, and we're going to take three, so we have eight choose three. All right, let's go to our calculator. Menu five, three, eight, comma, three, and I get 56. Equals 56. The formula for combinations is equal to the formula for permutations divided by R factorial. Explain how dividing R factorial relates to this problem. Okay, so well, let's see. Uh, if we were to do permutations, that would be 
8 times 7 times 6, right? Uh, okay. Explain how dividing by R relate R factorial relates to this problem. Well, let's see. We got 8 times 7 times 6. Let's try that. 8 times 7 times 6. All right, that's 336. 336. Well, let's divide that by 3 times 2 times 1. All right, so that's 6. Let's divide that by 6. Divide by 6. Okay. Hmm. Explain how dividing by R factorial relates to this problem. The formula for permutations gives a number of arrangements of three t-shirts in different orders. When buying t-shirts, the order does not matter, so you have to eliminate the duplicate sets by dividing by R factorial. The number of ways three shirts can be arranged. Well, let's think about it. Uh, the formula for combinations. Okay. So you've got eight shirts, and they're all different colors. Uh, we'll, we'll say red, green, blue, yellow, magenta, let's see, cyan, one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, I'm going to have a hard time. Uh, red, blue, green, yellow. Magenta, cyan. We'll say white. I can't use black. Well, I can't. I'll just have to call it BL. All right. So there's your eight colors. Now, we're going to choose three of them. Okay. And maybe if you, uh, I'm not going to work it all out. I'm just going to kind of show you a little bit. I'm just going to show you a little bit. Okay, so you can go red, uh, red, green, and blue. You could go red. Uh, you could choose red, green, blue. You could choose uh, green, blue, red, and you could choose blue, green, and red. All right. Do you not have the same sheets, the same shirts? So this really only counts as more. Okay? It really only does. <coughs> <coughs> but what if you had green, blue, and yellow? Then, of course, you could have blue, yellow, and green. Or you could have yellow, blue, and green. <coughs> this only counts as more. You see where I'm going with this? Uh, permutations, this would count as three, six, but combinations, it's really only two. Find the number of combinations of seven objects taken four at a time. So I'm thinking that's going to be seven, choose four. Let's see, menu, five, five, three, seven, comma, four. Ooh, what in the world is that? Cancel. Menu, five, three, seven, comma, four. And I get 35. Number six, Rachel has 10 valuable baseball cards. She wants to select two of them to sell online. How many different combinations of two cards can she choose? Well, that's 10, choose two. Menu, five, three, 10, comma, two. I get 45, so that's 45. Does it matter? 
It matters which two, but it doesn't matter which order because they're both so. If Rachel picked the cards at random, what is the probability that one of the two cards would be her Ken Griffey Jr. card? Hmm. Well, let's see. Well, there's 10 cards total, right? 10 cards total. And if you're only selling two, uh, that would mean there would be nine, nine, uh, nine combinations that would include Ken Griffey, right? Ken Griffey Jr. There was uh, this one 45 over here. So nine over 45, that's one fifth. Okay. Number eight. Miss Marshall has 11 boys and 14 girls in her kindergarten class. In how many ways can she select two boys to pass out a snack? Hmm. In how many ways can she select two boys? Let's see, what do we got? Uh, menu, five, three, and you got 11, comma, two. Hmm. So 11 choose 2 is 55. Number 9. In how many ways can Miss Marshall select three students to carry papers to the office? Well, we got 11 boys and 14 girls, so that's a total of 25. And we're only wanting three. So menu 5, 3. 25 comma 3, that's 2,300. What is the probability that Adam will be one of the students chosen to carry the papers to the office? Well, Adam could be chose first, second, or third, so there's three different ways that Adam can be chosen. Uh, And so, well, let's see here. We need to do it like this. We got Adam is a boy, so uh, let's see. Menu five, three. We got 11, ooh, too many ones, comma, one. That's 11. That's not right. Hmm, let's, let's think about this here. What is the probability that Adam could will be one of the students chosen to carry papers to the office? Well, there's three different ways. Okay, he could be the first one, he could be the second one, or he could be the third one. But what goes in the denominator? What goes in the denominator? What goes in the denominator? Because five Ooh. menu five three twenty five comma two menu. Five, three, 25 comma three is, hmm. There, he could be first, second, or third, right? Okay, so that's three, but how many would be in the denominator? We had 2,300 total ways up here for three, uh, for any of the three, but now we really only got, uh, we take uh, 
24 comma 2 and then okay so there we go we're going to have 24 choose 2 over 25 choose 3 and that was 276 276 over 2300 and divide 2300 and that's 3 over 25 over 25 there we go so that sounds about right let's try 19 4 mutually exclusive and overlapping events are the events choosing a black card and choosing a 10 from a deck of playing cards exclusive exclusively mutually exclusive mutually exclusive no. Why? Well, there are two black tens, the ten of spades and the ten of clubs. If there are 52 cards in a deck with two red suits, groups of 13 different cards, and two black suits, what is the probability that a card drawn, drawn will be a black ten? Well, there's two out of 52 and that makes 1 over 26. A can of vegetables, a can of vegetables with no label has a one eighth chance of being green beans and a one fifth chance of being corn. Are the events green beans and corns, corn mutually exclusive? I would say yes. What is the probability that an unlabeled can of vegetables is either green beans or corn? Well, let's see here. Uh, that would be one-fifth plus one-eighth. Okay, let's try that. At 13 over 40. Number four. Ben spins a spinner with the numbers 1 through 8. For problems 4 through 6, find each probability. Ben spins a multiple of 3 or a multiple of 5. Okay, well, let's, let's try it. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right, let's see here. So we're a multiple of three. A multiple of three, well, that would be three and six. And a multiple of five. A multiple of five would just be five. So uh, I'm counting, let's see, one, two, three, out of one, two, three, four, eight, three over eight. Number five, Ben spins a number greater than two or an even number. Greater than two or an even number. Well, that's going to be two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I'm counting seven of those out of eight. Ben spins a prime number or an odd number. A prime number or an odd number? Let's see here. Two, uh, a prime number or an odd number? So let's see, what are the odd numbers? We got three, five, and seven are odd. Prime would be two, right? 
and four is not five, six is not. And is there another? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So five out of eight. Because two is not, or four is not prime, and six is not prime, and eight is not prime, or odd. Oh, now we got us a little table going here. The problem that uses snail described. Okay, what do we got here? Of the 400 doctors who attended a conference, 240 practiced family law, family medicine, and 130 were from countries outside the United States. One third of the family medicine practitioners were not from the United States. Okay. Let's see. Uh, one third of the family were not from the United States. So I'm going to go 400 and divide that by 3. That's 133. Hmm, that's not. Okay, so we got. Let's see, of the 400 doctors who attended a conference, 240 practice family medicine. So that's 240 right there. All right, so 160 from 240, that leaves me with 80. All right, now we got 400 here. Let's see, 400 minus 240, that leaves me 160. Well, 50 of those is there, so that means that's 110. That's going to give me 270, and that's going to give me 130. And I was supposed to have 133, so it must have been a little round in there. Okay, so seven, we completed the table. What is the probability that a doctor at the conference practices family medicine or is from the United States? What is the probability that a doctor at the conference practices family medicine? That's uh, 240 or is from the United States. Well, that's 270 over there. So we got 240 plus 270, but we got to subtract this 160 because that's being counted twice over 400. So 240 plus 270 minus 160, I'm getting 350. That's uh, 350 over 400. Divide 400. And... Seven eighths uh, equals, we'll put it right here. What is the probability that a doctor at the conference practices family medicine? Family medicine or is not from the United States? What is the probability that the doctor at the conference practices? Well, that's going to be 240 again. Or is not from the United States. Well, that's going to be 130 plus 130. And then now we're going to have to do, subtract the 80 out. Minus 80. 240 plus 130. Or is, what is the probability that the doctor at the conference practice? Or is not from, okay, over 400. So we got 240 plus 130 minus 80. 240 plus 130 minus 80. That was being counted twice. So I got 290. That's going to be 290 over 400. That's going to be 29 over 40. Cool. 
What is the probability that a doctor at the conference does not practice family medicine? Does not, that's going to be 160. Or is from the United States, that's going to be 270. But we got to subtract out the 110 that's being counted twice, minus 110 over 400. 160 plus 270, 160 plus 270, minus 110. That's 320. So that's 320 over 400. Four fifths. All right, folks, good job. Thank you, and we'll see you later. Take care.